This chip and I are cousins. We share an ancestor who lived only six million years ago. Take off my suit and his hair and you'd find it hard to tell us apart. Our genes are pretty much the same. Maybe so. But where I can talk to camera, he communicates in grunts. And where my species rules the world, his still lives in trees. I've already argued that the essential difference between ape and man is in our heads, or more precisely, our brains. But what is so special about the human brain that allows us to dominate the planet? Why are we so much better than any other animal at imitation, language, and culture? Until recently, such questions belonged to philosophers. But now it's scientists who are finding the answers. In this film, I'll look at parrots who can talk, and children who can't, at all American cheerleaders and suicide bombers, and at viruses of the mind. Each of these things tells us something important about being human. An art gallery in Los Angeles. Among the paintings on display are three abstracts, recently bought at auction for 12,000 pounds. The painter of these paintings is rather famous. He's been compared by some critics to Kedinsky, by others to Pollock. In his day, Picasso was a fan and so was Miro. Who was he? Well, his name was Congo and he was a chimpanzee. For several months, Congo showed a lot of interest in painting. Like a lot of people, he simply enjoyed himself playing about with brushes and colors. In the 1950s, Congo was the most famous chimpanzee in the world. Encouraged to paint by the zoologist Desmond Morris, his paintings have been heralded as the pinnacle of simian aesthetics. Good enough to fool even the most discerning eye. I think that it's uh, really bold, it's abstract art that someone knows what they're doing, it's, and it does appear to have, it appears to be from the modern era. And it does I have like a lot it. of energy, it's, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it's very strong, it's a very strong piece of work. Very basic palette, limited. Yes. yes, and it's like, you know, even if you go in close, all the deliberate, um, painterly, you know, movement of the brush stroke, like the artist leaving this stuff, and if it was a prominent artist, then it would, you know, could be easily half a million dollars, or easily. Half a million? Yes. Hmm. Well, I can tell you that Picasso was an admirer of this chap. Oh, okay. Well, um, it's, it's probably, then you said it's from the 50s, it's probably a Pollock. Is it probably a Pollock? Yes. No. It's not. Okay. No. <laughs> the artist, his name was Congo. 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 And he was a chimpanzee. Oh, a chimp oh, chimpanzee. Really? Absolutely. Well, then it's not going to be half a million dollars, okay? <laughs> Congo's paintings are certainly pleasing to the eye. I wouldn't mind owning one of them myself. But are they art? The answer to that question is a resounding no. What am I drawing? Can you see it? Congo's work isn't art because it isn't part of a tradition. He just sat down and did what came naturally to him. But human artists are different. We're influenced by those around us. What's the name of your chimpanzee? Great masters are influenced by the cultural currents of their time. Children by the scribbles of their friends. Either way, the principle is the same. You're striking chimpanzees. We think of culture as being about originality, but it's not. It's really about imitation. 
And we are a relentlessly imitative species. You can see it when you've got a group of children around a table like this. They just can't resist copying each other, or me for that matter. Simon says, don't pop in there. Simon says, bang your head. Mimicry isn't confined to art. Children learn and play by copying each other. Simon says, tap your nose. Simon says, march. Simon says, stand absolutely still and don't move. Because imitation comes so naturally to us all and children do it so easily, we think it must be something simple. But it isn't. It requires an extraordinary big and clever brain to imitate. Imagine that you want to copy me doing this. You've got to watch that action, then transfer that, mentally, transfer that into doing something with your own arms that would look like, that do the same thing, that would look to somebody else to be similar. That cognitively is a very complex transformation. It's not surprising that other species can't do it. It requires a very clever brain. But because our brain's so good at it, we think of it as just a childish game, and we overlook how fundamental it is to what it is to be human. So what about our cousins? Can chimpanzees learn by imitating each other? Do apes ape? At the Max Planck Institute in Leipzig, researchers are trying to find out. This experiment involves a tube, a grape, and a hungry chimp called Yahaga. Yahaga wants the grape, but first she'll have to work out how to open the tube. Yahaga gets her grape. The task is then repeated. Yahaga has another tube to open. This time, however, a second chimp, Fifi, watches on. Yahaga, having learnt the trick of opening the tube, now does so easily. But now, it's Fifi's turn. Will she have learnt anything from watching Yahaga? Apparently not. She seems to have no idea how to open the tube. It's very odd when we watch chimpanzees doing tasks that we would do by imitation because to us it comes so naturally. They can learn by reward and punishment, trial and error, but what they can't do at all easily is watch what someone else has done, take, steal as it were, the benefits of somebody else's learning. They've got to do it themselves. Fifi eventually works out how to open the tube. But she does it her own way, using her feet. It seems that the knack of imitation is something that has evolved since humans and chimps last shared an ancestor. Sometime during the last six million years, the human brain was rewired. But how? Surprisingly, the answer has something to do with cheerleaders and an autistic boy.